started? Because I know you sort of like chopped and changed it all around. Yeah. Well, we we were in here about uh, must have been in here about eleven months ago. Yep. now. And I was with uh, a drummer and a guitarist, and they both they both left over the course of eleven months. Oh. So then, <laughs> so then I was left on my own, and uh, struggled val valiantly on with uh, Wendy the Werewolf over there. Yeah. And, uh, Wendy and then Paul came along quite recently, and um, we we met at a gig where our first gig together was we actually met. So we hadn't played together when we played our first gig at the Six Six Bar in Cambridge. It's first time. Well, well how, how did Paul learn the songs? And did you send the tracks over to him? Yeah, yeah, just sent them over to him, and because he's such a professional, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I just listened to him in the dressing room and then made notes. <laughs> got a piece of paper at the side of me. I stripped all the, the drums off the kit and uh, just made sure that I just got the basics so I didn't get tempted to go mad. Excellent. That doesn't help. So how did you come across Paul then? Oh, the usual way, Doc. Find my band and this or yeah, something like that. Yeah, just online, posted an advert and he, he replied. At the time, I, I was just playing with the dance beat. I played one gig with just the dance beat, just me and the dance beat yeah. at the Ostrich. Uh, that was, yeah, that was Socks On show. Yeah. Socks On record show. And then, um, yeah, and then Paul came along, and we've been playing. We played three shows, and we played three shows. I think it's three, yeah. Uh, yeah. Three shows. So this is like the grand introduction of Paul. It's all about Paul. <laughs> it's tonight. not all about me. It's all about you, Matt. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's his birthday tomorrow. It's all. Oh, about is it? Oh, happy birthday! birthday. Tomorrow, yeah. Oh. Oh, well done. And there's a new dad. A new dad is. Oh, it's all happening. Oh, it's all right, happening. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, a wonderful baby boy in um, in February. Oh, well, you, you are a new dad then, that yeah. That was very special. Noah, yeah. his name is. So big shout out to Noah, who's listening, and also to Gemma, my darling partner, who gave birth to him. Yeah. Big well done to Gemma. <laughs> Rightio, what's the first track you're going to play for us this evening? It's called Human Cannibals, Doc. Off you go. All right, then. <laughs> We tell the lie! 
what's out there. I'm all out of breath after that, Doc. Yeah, but I can't see you really. There's a great big pillar in the way, and I've not started looking on my phone yet because I always uh, concentrate on the sound for a start. <laughs> so, uh, what sort of. Uh, what, what do you like putting in your lyrics? Because those are quite unusual lyrics. What sort of inspires you? Oh, mostly rage and anger <laughs> and discontent and irreverence. Uh, that's, that's basically it. It's all the stuff I don't generally express in my everyday life, really. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sort of, what, what are you raging and angry about? <laughs> God knows. I haven't got a clue. He's not an angry person. Well, this is it. Really? I'm not an angry person, but I've got... We all have an angry side, of course. Mm. Um, in my day job, I'm a, um, a psychotherapeutic counsellor, so uh, oh, yeah, wow. quite often it's people, people really struggle if they don't express their anger. Yeah, it, get that. It can really um, impact them in a very negative way. Obviously, it's about expressing it you know, cleanly and, mm. and safely, but, you know. And you burn a lot of energy off playing the guitar and jumping around anyway. There's a lot of energy and anger and rage, I tell you. It's great. <laughs> oh. what, what inspired you to take up music? Say again? What inspired you to take up music? Um, oh, I, I, I've been making music since I was um, seven. I started playing piano, but... Yeah, did your parents encourage you to take up piano? That's it, yeah. My mum's a music teacher. My ah. dad was a DJ in the 70s. He sold um, Hi-Fi on Tottenham Court Road. Nice. They might oh, be listening oh, to. Nice. So yeah. shout out to them. Hope he kept some of the equipment. That would be worth a lot of money nowadays. Oh, he's got some good gear. Yeah. <laughs> he's got some lovely Tannoy speakers. Yeah, I'm always keeping an eye out for 1970s stuff. Got 80s oh. stuff, but 70s stuff's a bit harder to come by. It's chunky. It takes up a lot of space, but it's worth it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I sort of like them sort of amps that have sort of got a false veneer on them, you know what I mean? From, oh. from the 70s and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Stop it. <laughs> get me all hot and under the collar. Yeah, yeah. I also get there. I should get there, build a system out of that sort of stuff here and there. You know what I mean? You come across it now and again. Yeah. What's the next track you're going to play for us? Uh, this song's called Time Waster. Oh, yeah.
Cheers. We've got a few shout outs to people. Shout out to uh, Michael Day. Shout out to Gemma Ilston. Shout out to Stuart Inger. Uh, Gemma Ilston says, uh, Great to be able to hear you live again. Sounding great. That's my lady. Hello, Gemma. And uh, Stuart In Inger from Nottingham says, uh, Greetings from Nottingham. Loving it. Oi, oi. That's where my daughter was. And Michael Day comments, uh, Great band like him. Guys, thanks for listening and uh, watching and commenting on the show. Uh, Matt, do you have like a big book of words and stuff like that you keep by the bed or it's all on a sound recorder on your phone? Um, I, nowadays, I tend to record stuff in my phone. Yep. It's quite modern, really, I guess, isn't it? But, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a little book, too. My missus bought it for me. It's got a um, lovely watercolour of a, a raven on it. Ra a raven is my uh, my favourite Favourite animal. I love the raven. Yeah. Oh, you're a bit dark, aren't you? You're a bit of a dark horse by the sounds of it. <laughs> well, ravens are great. You know, they're kind of associated with death, aren't they? But yeah. it's also about renewal. So it's about some things falling away and other things coming to fruition. Isn't and that there? sort of legend about the the ravens in the Tower of London, if they yeah. all if they all leave or something, it's gonna you know it's gonna be the apocalypse and all that sort of thing. Yes. They're magical birds. Very intelligent. Corvids in yeah. general, actually. Crows love crows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very clever birds. It's amazing, really, because I've read an article about corvids and crows and ravens and stuff like that. Yeah. And you'd think, oh well, because they're, they're very small, very small head, and you think like they've got a small brain. Yeah. And yeah. but they've their sort of uh, their brain cells that make the neurons that make up their uh, br brains are very tiny as well. Wow. And so they've got like billions of these neurons as well. So that squeezed into a small brain, and that's what makes them quite intelligent. Yeah, they use tools and stuff like that. Eh? Well, that makes perfect sense then, because I've got a massive head, but I'm pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't say things like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next track you're going to play for us? Oh, oh this oh, is a, this is a, um, our last single. So it came out in January. Mm -hmm. It's available on all good streaming platforms, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, it's called Dirty Secret. Off you go.
Cheers. Oh, yeah, got a few comments for you. Uh, Philip Clark says, nice, what's your fudge pedal? Are you using an octave pedal? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? I'm using a, a, it's a synth pedal. It's a synth pedal that produces a, um, a bass synth sound. Ah. And then I'm using a rat uh, for, the, for the guitar. Ian Congrave comments, uh, quoth the raven nevermore. Oh, that's just lovely. Thanks for bringing that in, man. And uh, Chris Gardner, shout out to uh, Chris Gardner. Thank you very much for listening and uh, watching the show, guys. I really did like that track w uh, that you just played. Cause remember when you sent it into the show? Whereabouts did you? Whereabouts did you record it? Oh, I recorded it in my cabin. No. Yeah, it was before um, I met Paul. Otherwise, yeah. he would have been playing on it. Yeah, yeah. I had to put it with a, a dancey beat, and um, I recorded it in my cabin and um, produced it and. Did the video in my cabin too. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't leave me on it. It sounds awesome. Ah, stop it, you. Yeah. It it's a, it's it's a great, it's a great power riff, isn't it? It really is a great power riff. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We played it um, last time in here, but it's a very different version now. Like, yeah, it's, it's heavier, isn't it? Really, well, I think. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've kind of um, beefed it all up. Kind of yeah, I've realised I, I prefer playing it a little bit beefier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, where, where did you learn to be able to record all your own music and stuff like that? Oh, it's just. You know, because I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm that good. I've just been doing it for so long. I, I can just do a half decent job, you know. Um, but I'm not a pro, you know. Um, I just tweak it until it sounds how I like it and hope that everybody else feels the same. Or at least some people feel the same. I mean, I mean some people, you know, like going into the studio, and, and that's fair enough. But the great thing about doing it yourself, yeah. you can always go back to it and give it another tweak, can't you? Exactly. Whereas once you've come out of the studio, usually that's it, really, when you've got the final product, you know. Because it could right. cost you a loads more money as you go back. Oh, can we just remix this? Bit? Can we just remix that bit? Well, yeah, quite often the people in the studios as well have very specific ideas of how they want it to sound. Yes. And, you know, they tend to put an awful lot of themselves into it, um, and I struggle with that. Um, Maybe I'm a control freak, I don't know, but, um, yeah. It's it, punk, it's, it's, it makes you more punk if you do it yourself, Well, that's it? what, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's, that's the old ethos of punk, really. Well, it is. I Doing it yourself. I don't listen to much p punk, Doc, but I really love the, the, the ethos, as you said, of yeah. punk music, you know. And I think punk has so much uh, to, to uh, well, it's, it's been so influential in terms of everything that followed it, you know, all, the, all that great... Um, Post punk underground, stuff. Underground, indie, yeah. post punk stuff, you know, all of that alternative. It's all got punk in it. And um, yeah, it's, it's a great, great uh, genre of music. It really fired things up, didn't it? It did. And there's still plenty of it around, or DIY music scenes, as we yeah, call man. it now, eh? nowadays. You know, it's quite, it's quite sort of busy in the people area. Yeah. So well, you're, you're sort of around the sort of more sort of East Cambridgeshire, South Cambridgeshire area, aren't you? Well, I'm, I'm close to St. Neitz. Yeah. And then uh, Paul's that closer to Cambridge, I mm. think, aren't you? Uh, pretty much in Cambridge, yeah. Pretty much yeah. in Cambridge, yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think? Of, that's, that's, I mean, Cambridge has got quite a good music scene there, haven't they? It's got great music scene. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, mean, I prefer got Peterborough mean, you, myself. Because, yeah. you know, here we, here we, I've got, um, you know, Socks on Records yeah. have been just so yeah. supportive. It's just a very different sort of feel, the music scene in Cambridge, than it is in Peterborough. I, yeah, think, it's more it broad, I think it's more broad. I think the sort of like the, the busiest part of the music scene in Peterborough is probably like the, the punk do it yourself yeah. scene. Well, that, that's, where, that's where it differs over in Cambridge. It seems to be more folk based. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people in uh, Cambridge with knitted jumpers and stuff like that, though, isn't there? You know what I mean? <laughs> there is. Yeah, but I mean, you've got some great venues. I mean, you, you've got the Junction, which is a great venue to yeah. go to, and uh, Six Six Bar. Yeah, and then uh, I mean, you, what's the the larger place? The Junction. Exchange. Yeah, the Corn Exchange. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a Corn Exchange. There's yeah. lots of little tiny venues as well. You yeah. Places like uh, Hank's Dirty. Yeah, we're playing the Hank's Dirty on the that's 17th a new one, That's a new May. one on me. Yeah. 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 You've got Barbo as well. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's quite a few uh, pubs in the area as well. And where did you play when you played the Cambridge Band uh, competition? Uh, that was at the Portland. Yeah, I mean, in yeah, Portland, Portland, they yeah. get quite a few up and coming bands going through there, don't yeah, they? That's a, that's a nice little venue. That yeah, I like the Portland Arms. Great sound. Yeah. Great sound. Bit difficult to park around, but apart from that, <laughs> if, you, if you drive down there, you're like, oh, it's a bit hard to find a park. It is a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, but that's Cambridge all over, really. Yeah, yeah it's true. 
it's true. Yeah. Yeah, but um, it's been quite nice, actually, because up until recently, I've been playing mostly around Peterborough. Mm. But um, now we've been playing more around Cambridge recently. Well, get um, yourself known around there as well, yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And we just, you know, we got um, a gig at the Ostrich, first one for a while in Peterborough on the 24th of May. Um, yeah, so we're looking forward to that. But it's been nice to, you know, go somewhere else yeah. and play there too, yeah. you know. The Ostrich has got a great music scene, though. It does. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's got brilliant. a great crowd of people. Ah, oh, yeah. You it's know, fantastic. We're really a friendly bunch. Music lovers, aren't they? Yes, yeah, without a doubt. What's the next track you're going to play for us? Uh, this is uh, our first single. It's uh, called Family Fantasy. I remember this one. This is another good one. You're banging them out tonight. <laughs> Shout out to uh, uh, Scott Bray. He says, uh, love it, nice bit of bite to that song. Yeah. And a shout out to uh, Shane Spencer. Oh, just bang me head on the mic. Uh, Paul. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. You've got an interesting uh, backstory. I've got lots of interesting backstory. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so you grew up in Manchester? Uh, no, I actually Sorry. grew up in, uh, well, my early, early yeah. first couple of years, yes, Manchester, but... 
Uh, I spent most of my early life in Macclesfield, oh, Cheshire, cool. just about 20 miles south. Is it? Of, yeah, about 20 miles mm. south of uh, Manchester. Uh, lovely musical heritage there. You know, you've got bands like uh, Joy Division. Yeah, of course. Um, and uh, what encouraged you to take up the drum? Who encouraged you to take up the drum? Uh, my grandfather, actually. I got a drum kit for my fourth birthday. Or was it my fifth birthday? I bet your mum and dad loved him. Uh, well, the, drum, <laughs> the drum kit disappeared after a few weeks and I never saw it again. <laughs> but my uh, my grandfather apparently was a professional drummer. Um, not that I ever saw much of him. But, uh, mm. And what age did you return to it? Um, to drums? Yeah. Um, I think it was when I was at college. Um, I was at college uh, studying music. I'd, I'd already playing a, a few other musical instruments and uh, I needed to take up a, another couple of musical instruments for my college course. Uh -huh. um, I decided to take up the drums so I bought a drum kit from a catalogue and uh, the hardware was useless and the cymbals were terrible but the drums were actually really nice. I've still got them. Wow. It was a uh, Premier Sanitor kit. That sounds and, good. Uh, I've, ne I've never really seen another one. Quite a rare thing, apparently. Collectors are on sort of thing. But it does sound awesome. Oh, excellent. Um, so you still use it now and again? Uh, well, I was going to use it, but uh, I had a little bit of trouble with my van today, so I put uh, a different drum kit in that I, I usually play with. Fair enough. Band with. Fair enough. So when you was playing, what sort of music was you playing when you first started, like in bands uh, and stuff like that? When I first started playing music, um, I was four years old when I got on stage for the first time, uh, playing the cornets at the Salvation Army. Brilliant. Yeah, and uh, I shook like a leaf. I was so nervous, but uh, I, I never, I never stopped playing music ever. Um, all the way through school, I got preferential treatment, taken out of lessons to play music. Of course, yeah. Uh, went on to college to do music, and it's just been my entire life. And when I left college, uh, I ended up being in bands, having my own rehearsal studios, recording studios, and uh, it became a profession. Nice. Do you still make? Do you still make a living out of music? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've got um, I've got a sound, sound and lighting business. Uh, still produce people. Uh, I've got somebody coming coming over tomorrow night actually. Nice. Uh, for the weekend to carry on producing an album. Uh, yeah, I, I still do quite a lot. And you 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 know a lot of people from the Manchester music scene. I take I, it. I know one or two. Yeah. 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 yeah we won't about name dropping. And, and I, I don't want to do any. No. I what and and. A little bird told me that you uh, ran away with the circus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was quite an interesting. I, I was actually working on a cruise ship, and uh, I met my wife on there, who's um, from St. Petersburg, and we came. Oh, fantastic! She was getting a little bit uh, homesick, and I saw on the front cover of the Cheshire Life um, some Russian Cossacks who were about to tour. And uh, with being a sound and lighting engineer, I just decided to call the company up and see if they needed any help. And I ended up running away with that show, and um, and that turned into quite a big um, show. Mm. It was called Spirit of the Horse, and um, because of that, that was part of the uh, the Gandhi Circus organisation. And uh, I ended up working with uh, a number of the Gandhi shows and. Um, do you tour the world with them, sort of thing? Uh, I've been to one or two places, uh, mostly the UK, really. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've been to Asia and a few other places with them. But, I mean, I've been really lucky to have travelled all over the world with my work. Mm. Fantastic life. What a fantastic life. very privileged. Yeah, yeah. Well, not many people could do a job that they really love, is it? You know what I mean? Well, uh, as we were saying earlier, that's the holy grail, isn't it? To yeah, to it is. Yeah. Make what you love doing your your livelihood. Yeah, w without a doubt. The holy grail. Yeah, without their own. I, I certainly do love what I do. Excellent. What's the next song you're going to play us, guys? It's called uh, "Real Big Somebody." Off you go. <laughs> Somebody, you're gonna go real far. You get your picture in the papers, or oh, then you'll be a star. How'd you do? I'm your biggest fan. 
just came up to beat you and take you by the hand. How do you get to get where you are? Did you ride a hit series? Is it fire to your guitar? How do you look so good for your age? Did it cost a lot of money to wipe or wipe from your face? You're real big somebody You're gonna go real far You get your picture in the papers Oh, and you'll be a star Did you really tell it all to the magazine? Or did you hold something back that they might buy by Over dose of pills and travel the bar. Did you change your name by default to a fruit just for a laugh? How many different ways of covering your pain? You're watched up, no hope, sad case. That's what you're saying. I take it. We you, ended it. You did. <laughs> so I, I, I suspect you might not have ended it in the right way. <laughs> not, not to worry. Usually, when you make a mistake in a song, anyway, unless people know your songs really, really well, we could have got away with it if I had mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too late now. Yeah, yeah. So I, I take it you guys will be uh, writing music together then. Hey. You, you, you two will be writing music together. Well, yeah, we're Com- gonna we're gonna try some new tunes soon, aren't we? I've got there's there's one you quite like. Uh, I can't remember it? what it's called now. Do you mean just one? I like all of them. Oh bless you. Yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't have joined your band if he didn't like her, would he? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, he's he's great. I was absolutely blown away when I when I heard what he was uh, coming out with. Oh, both blank smoke up I love each other's it. behind yeah. Somewhere, aren't we? Yeah. But anyway, he is he is um, really dedicated and passionate, and I really appreciate. <laughs> it. Yeah, because he's, 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 he's uh, Paul's playing with a broken knuckle as well. Hey. Yeah, he, he's usually got on a broken knuckle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's because of too much passion hitting the drums. I keep breaking my fingers. Have you always been pretty? Well you, you always been very energetic playing the drums. Always, yeah. I mean, the, my nickname in the past has been Animal for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm actually trying to calm it down a little bit. <laughs> you know, but when uh, when there's an audience there, you know, my arms are flying everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So was you always in loud bands? Always in. Uh, loud? Yeah, I, I mean, a long time ago, I used to practice. 
really pride myself that uh, I'd always break something on a drum kit, and if I didn't break something, then you uh, hadn't been hitting them hard enough. Hadn't <laughs> hit them hard enough. Yeah, absolutely. Fan fantastic. You know, drums are meant to be hit and destroyed. Yeah, yeah, so. You know, and you know, enthusiasm I've got lots of, talent and technique not a lot, so I just make up for it with energy. And and uh, so what's it? You've sort of like played in punk bands, metal bands. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've played with uh, a lot of uh, a lot of bands over the years, but uh, I stopped playing drums round about. Around about 1993. Well, that's quite a break then. Yeah. And it wasn't until about two or three years ago I heard the uh, the Mojo Slide were looking for a drummer, and uh, yeah. I, I know the band. I, lo yeah. I love the music. Yeah, I know them guys. And uh, so I called them up and just said, uh, "Hey guys, let me uh, let me come and play drums with you." Have you been um, on the show playing with the Mojo Slide? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. have. Ah. Yeah, you'll have to get us on again. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. They're, they're a great bunch of guys. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a word with Mark and say, tell him to message us. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. And away we go. It's probably because there's so many of them in that band. How many of them? There's like five, aren't there? Yeah, there's people. five of them. Yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. way at the back and you're a bit blocked out by all of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, my arms are flying. People sitting <laughs> there. The C symbol stands flying across so, the stage. So you've been in the studio before and they've never had a good chat with you. There we go. He's been, <laughs> be, he's been hiding away at the back there. That's mm. the thing about drummers. You never see them, but because there's only two of us, you've, you've got no option now. Yeah, that's it. Like I say, there is a food band. I mean, it's got... Um, Dan Donovan, he plays he, he play yeah. some sort, yeah. He was playing uh, the other night, Tuesday, yeah. at um, yeah. uh, the, the Ostrich, wasn't he? Yeah. With um, Sam uh, from uh, Coupe de Tet as well. Yeah. yeah. I was, it was a shame I missed that one, but yeah, Dan's fantastic. Really good. And then and you've got Dodo's uh, as well. Dodo Appreciation Yeah, Society. let's never, never, Two never, piece. yeah. And uh, all Beals and the Baron, if you never yeah, heard them before, absolutely, they're, they're, they're another one. We could we could set up a gig, couldn't you? Really, oh, yeah. that'd be two that'd be quite piece. a night, really. Two two piece night. The sound men, man would love us, wouldn't they? Would yeah, be like, oh, nice yeah. and easy. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be that's quite an idea, really, isn't it? <laughs> two piece night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Down the it's Aust 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 yeah, yeah. It's a good, good idea. We'll have to do that. Let's yeah. see if we can pursue it. I'll oh, shout out to uh, Dave Babbick and a shout out to uh, Wyndham Coombe Boxall. Guys, thank you for listening and uh, watching the show. Oh, you've got some new ones to play for us. What's the next track you're going to play for us? Oh, this next track is called it's Nice Swimming one. Dock. There we go. It's a new one. What was it it's called, sorry? One. Well, it's a new one for Paul mm. and it's called Night Swimming. Ah. Ah. Okay. I've got no good faith in the kind of life that we live today I've got no good faith in what the papers say I've got no good faith in the corporation in the factory line I've got no good faith in the scientific mind Could have been better, brighter, if course in time. I swim in as it's a direction. Give me dipping and it's a direction. Yeah. Oh. I swim in, come away with. Connected and caught between the shopping lines. All plugged and disconnected in the eye, the me, the mine. All plugged and disconnected and mesmerized by the tape face brain. All plugged and disconnected in the hits of dopamine. This could have been better. If more in
Oh, I've got some shout-outs. Shout-out to uh, Rafael Marciano. Uh, Shout-out to uh, Tim Jones. Shout-out to Mark Wilkes. Mark, got to go to get you back on the show. Send me a message. Uh, Shout-out... Uh, no, I've already shout-out, Gemma. Gemma says, uh, look what you've done with night swimming. Oh, thanks, Gem. And Wyndham Coombs Boxall's comments getting dead Kennedy vibes. Isn't it just you say you got Mark Wilkes doing a shout-out? Yeah, I just shouted out Mark oh, Wilkes, nice yeah. Nice one, eh, Mark? Mm-hmm. They've put me off my train. Oh, yeah. Why have we got a, a werewolf in the corner? That's not a werewolf, that's Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. Wendy the werewolf. Where, 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 where's this, where's this bizarre idea come from? You know. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's just a gimmick, isn't it? <laughs> Let's face it. No, she's our uh, mascot. She wears the T-shirt, so she's advertising the wares. Yeah. That's why she's a werewolf. I just ah, made that up. Well, it's, 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 it's full of puns also, tonight. Also, she's wearing a, a special tiara tonight in your honour, Doc. Oh, bless her. You, you, you are a bit of a fan of horror films, though, yourself, aren't you? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah, have love you, it. Have you oh, seen that movie. recent film? Because uh, you just done a song called Night Swimming. There's, a, yeah. there's one called Night Swim. Night Swim? No, yeah, I no, that's, no. that's quite a good one. You sort of think, nah, it can't be that scary, really, about a swimming pool. But it's quite, you know, having a swim in a swim, like a haunted swimming pool, you're thinking, now nah, they're going to be having a laugh. But uh, it's, it's, it's a good film. It's That's amazing it. what people can make, you know, films out of ideas that come yeah. out of people's heads sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? They're I like, like the old old classic horrors, though. Do you? You're like a Hammer horror fan, oh, are you? Uh, the Birds. Yeah, oh, the Alfred Shining. Hitchcock. Yeah, Shine you know, is classic, yeah. Those, hey, are, those are awesome. Hey, Matt, tell them about Easter Sunday. Hey. Easter Sunday. That, uh, what happened on Easter Sunday? Well, we were doing that, that gig at the Six Six, and I'd got that oh. horror rabbit mask on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he was wearing a horror rabbit mask, and he freaked some guy out so badly that you know, this guy responded quite violently to him. Yeah, well, I, I, I put it on the back of my head, and the poor guy was stood behind me. And every every time he went somewhere, I went somewhere, and this rabbit was staring at him <laughs> all the time. And it was a scary rabbit with big eyes. and yeah, Like sort of a Donnie Darko teeth. sort of... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a lot more scary than that, actually. Yeah. Was it? Oh, I wouldn't like to meet Are you into your horror actually. films as well, then? I'm not into horror films. No. I don't watch horror films. If no. I see a horror film about to come on, I'll, I'll switch channel or find mm. something else to do. Don't yeah. like horror movies. Why not? He's repressed his rage. <laughs> no, it's, it's not, I, I don't. I don't find them scary at all. I just. I just think they're silly. Mm. Mm. Uh, it, it, yeah, I have each to their own. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's, you know, I, that's I don't. I don't, I don't watch play. horror films for the fact that they're, they're, they're scary. I just think like because a lot of the time they they got original storyline that you never sort of you know you've seen before, which is you know, I mean you. You know, the trouble is with detective movies or action movies, you've watched about 20 minutes of it, and you're like, I know exactly where this film's going to go. Yeah. Exactly. Well, where it's like a horror film or a science fiction film, it's just the whole idea that, you know, you think, well, that that idea is, even if the, the film's really cheesy, sometimes the idea behind it can be really good, and that's what attracts me to, to horror films and science fiction well, and stuff like that. It's less real, isn't it? You know, it's, it, I think some people are fans of, you know, like fantasy and yeah, well, I am fantasy horror, horror all that sort of stuff. Yeah, kind of sci-fi because it's unreal, isn't it? Yeah, it's escapism as well, yeah. no, no doubt. Yeah, whereas yeah. other people like the real stuff, the gritty stuff, the the earthly I stuff. I like watching a know. good documentary personally. Yeah, I don't mind a good documentary <laughs> either, but you know what I mean. So. A cup of cocoa and a nice bicky. Yeah, a, a nice glass of red wine and nice glass of red wine. Yeah, you're coffee. too cultured. <laughs> you're too cultured for us. <laughs> oh, we'll have to get you That's some nice. I live in Cambridge. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. surprised you're not in a jumper. We're the cheese and wine brigade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what about Cambridge? Like, like, well, like, it sort of dies a bit, doesn't it? Summer holidays and school holidays and all that sort of thing. It's a totally different place without the students. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is one of the best places to live in the country, personally. Yeah, yeah. I was in a charity shop in Cambridge recently, and the lady was just going out the door, and she was um, making rude remarks about people that live in St. Neots, actually. She was saying, no! Yes! <laughs> I, was, I was outraged. She, she disappeared before I could say something. It's just jealousy. She, she said people in, from St. Neots have bad teeth. <laughs> and I resent that. <laughs> Yeah, but Americans say American people say all English have got bad teeth, don't they? You know what I mean? No, oh, we have dogs' teeth. They're just yeah, real dogs teeth. teeth. Yeah, that's another thing. Where'd you get the idea of dogs' teeth from? Oh, I was walking the dogs, and you know, oh god, it's a right nightmare trying to come up with a name. Dog, I tell you, well, yeah, it's like a good one. Yes, and um, it just came out of out of walking the dogs. I, you know, I was with my missus, and <laughs> you know, just spitballing names really, and it just came out of that. But 
I just like the savagery in it. <laughs> and, you know, we put exclamation marks after the dogs and the teeth. Because first you see the dogs and then you feel the bite, don't you? So, <laughs> dogs teeth! Oh! <laughs> so that's how you pronounce it. It's not dogs' teeth, it's dogs' teeth! Like that. <laughs> what sort of dogs have you got? Uh, we've got two little... <laughs> they're, they're the most unfierce dogs you could possibly yeah. imagine. They're tiny little white things uh, called Lacerapsos. Uh, I they're... know the sort, of, the sort of thing you mean. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. originally from uh, Tibet and they used to hang out with the monks in Tibet. Yeah, yeah. Keep, yeah. keep them warm, mind you. You know what I mean. Like, like the native people in the North Pole, they have like a, how cold it is. So it's really cold. You have it's averagely cold. You have a one dog night, and if it's a, it gets a bit cold, you have a two dog night until we get like the whole lot of the sleigh dogs in. Like it's about a ten dog night because it's about <laughs> minus ten minus no, 30, minus thirty four or something like that. You know what I mean? So. Wow. Wow. Well, whatever it is up there. So that's what I say. That's what I say to my dogs. I say, come on, dogs, it's two dog night tonight. And they dive on the bed and <laughs> <laughs> away, away we go. Like, you know what I mean? I, I Do you have your dogs in bed? That's another interesting well, question. Yeah, I was just about to say, I can't deal with my dogs in the bed. No. It drives me crazy. Like, I, I'd love to have them on the bed, but they wake me up every five seconds. Are they jiffle arses, are they? Oh, they just move around and yeah. they, they keep me up. So, uh, yeah. yeah, they're right beside the bed. I've got one that follows me. As soon as I go to bed, he's up there straight on the bed and he just stays yeah. in bed all night long. Oh, and if anybody dares enter the room or comes near it, he just growls. He's got the most evil growl going. <laughs> you know? It's a lovely dog, but he's like very protective at night time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. one of my sons comes in in the morning or something to grab something out this the other bathroom or something. He, yeah. you know, as soon as he opens, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> And he sounds like, anyway, that's enough about dogs. Let's get back to the music. Oh, I can speak about dogs all night long. Have you, have you got one? Well, we'll have one more chat. Have you, have you got a dog, Paul? No, I've got a cat. Ah, uh, cat person. You see what I mean? No, I'm, cat I'm person not, lives not, in Cambridge. Not a got a woolly person. jumper. Oh, just not an old boy. I'm actually a allergic wide. to cats as well. It's just. <laughs> it's just uh, is it your missus, cat? Well, I think it's constructive dismissal. <laughs> oh, I see. She insisted on getting a cat. Yeah. But you know what? It's a lovely little thing. But mm. talking about bad shit, she likes climbing under the blankets and hiding during the day. And you walk into the bedroom, there's a little tiny lump in the middle of the bed <laughs> underneath the covers. And you've got to be careful, you just don't sit on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's a cat? Yeah. What's a cat called? Um, Pussycat. <laughs> That's what my parents, my parents have got a cat. And I said, what do you call, what's his name? He's like, cat. Well, well, fair my, enough. My wife named him. Varsa, but uh, I, I think it's a crap name. Varsa. So, so I usually call the cat either Pussy Cat or Catty Puss. <laughs> Catty Puss is not too bad at all, is it? Could go for that one. What's the next track you're going to play for us, guys? Um, oh, this uh, this song. I reckon this is going to be our next single. It's called Broken Problem. I think it's certainly worthy. <laughs>
Shout out to uh, Philip Allen, a shout out to uh, Andy Henderson, and a shout out to uh, Leah Grace. Thank you very much for listening and watching the show. Uh, are you fans of The Damned? Because I think The Damned. Yes. 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 I love The Damned. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a damned influence oh, in there. Oh, you're the first pen- person to ever equate what I do with The Damned. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I can, I can, I can just pick up on it here and there. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. that, that Doesn't band. sound much like Eloisa to me. Well, I don't know. I don't know. What's that? Dave Vanian. Yeah, Dave Vanian. There's some Dave Vanian vibes coming from you guys. <laughs> no, I mean, the early damned. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, I should definitely know. get where you're coming from. Well, from that. Neat Neat and people, songs like that. Yeah. But no, I think it's a bit sort of mid damned when he's sort of, they sort of hit their more yeah. gothic style period. Yeah, I can sort of see that, yeah. 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 There's a bit of drama in there, you see. Yes, see. Drama. Yeah. Mixed with punk. Yeah. You get the damned, or you get us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can see there. Uh, New Age Grace comment uh, sounding great. Thank you very much for listening to watching. Yeah, yeah, nice one. All right, so, do you, have, you got enough to do two songs back to back? We've only got one song That's left. all right. Well, it's but perfect it's right, time. It's, it's perfect really, time. It's really long. <laughs> 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 That's what she said. Yeah. Right, last one. What's it called? It's called Pig Pen. Pig Pen, off we go.
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dog Steve, big shout out to uh, Paul Biggins on the mixing desk this evening, and a big shout out to uh, Jack doing the video this evening. Uh, this is a band from uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh,